morning, Elise. How are you hey, both doing? Good morning. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. I know that from Bermuda, we've actually had some rain. Not really. Barely. It's kind of around us like that. <laughs> All right. Okay. We're hoping, though, hoping for more. <laughs> yeah, I know somebody's got a photograph of raindrops in, in their swimming pool. So, oh, okay. Optimistic uh, uh, at last sense. Anyway. Still Mykonos. Yep, still, um, it's few and far between. Right. Rain showers. So, um, mm -hmm. so, how are you doing in Canada? Loving this uh, cool air. I mean, it went down to about like 63 last night, you know, which is. Uh, Oh man, I mean, talk about sleeping weather, it's just beautiful. So I get up at about 6.30 and, uh, you know, start my day. It's just, it's so invigorating, so. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, Best yeah, way yeah. To, to spend the summer. Yeah, you're right, you're right, yeah. you're right, so. All right, yeah. so today we are talking about the well-known Bermudian artist, Alfred Birdsey. And um, wanted to kick off with um, Tom and Lise, if you have a little context information about who he was, you know, and then we can talk a little bit more about his paintings and his style. Um, but maybe just kind of start with, you know, where he originated, how he moved to Bermuda, um, and, and we'll go from there. Well, okay, I well, probably... he was born. Okay, you want to go? Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. He, um, Bernstein was born in 1912, and he moved to Bermuda when he was seven years old with his parents. Um, I have a feeling, but I could be wrong, that his father was, um, he was English, so I have a feeling maybe his father was associated with Dockyard, but I could be wrong because I don't know that. And it's interesting because although, as you say, he was such a well-known figure, um, I don't have a whole lot of files on Birdsey, so it, this is going to, you know, push me to go call Joe Birdsey Lindbergh and... Um, be able to you know fill out our files on him as well but in any event he was so t totally self-taught he didn't take any art classes except his mentors were well-known Bermud Bermudian Philadelphian artist Donald Donald Kirkpatrick and a, an American named Joe Jones who was um, who was a, a sort of a, 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 a radical painter in the 30s so Tom can finish, he can go on with that and I can go on about his his later style um, because we have a lot of anecdotal stories about birds. Um, the, the, some of the backdrop for, for me is that when um, I was doing these Heritage Month things back in the mid 80s, one of the uh, pleasures that I had was putting a uh, magazine together called Heritage 86. And uh, that was a very uh, busy year for me because we were also doing a major uh, exhibition uh, for Heritage Month, but one of the people that um, um, was interviewed was Alfred Birdsey. And Alfred Birdsey talked about uh, the aforementioned uh, Joe Jones, but also the influence of uh, Charles Damoth. He was aware of Damoth's uh, uh, style even during the 30s, and even though he lived sort of in this remote uh, backwater called uh, Bermuda with uh, coral stone roads and no cars, because uh, that was the, uh, the, the, the Bermuda then that he would have uh, grown up of and experienced. So that was, uh, was item number one, was doing the, the interview with him. And he was very generous in his time and very generous in his forthcoming about how he made his living being the icon. People went at the height of it, during the 50s, at the height of his, his productivity, people made a beeline from the airport down to the Birdsey studio, bought their souvenir, then they could spend the uh, next two weeks sitting on the beach and, uh, and reading, knowing that they were going back to the the States or Canada. And by the way, here on the East Coast, there have been a number of birdsies that have turned up here uh, as well. So it's not just in the United States or south of the border that they turn up. They turn up all over uh, uh, North America. Uh, how many works he did is, is it, you can't even estimate how he did it because near the end of his life, he was doing probably 20 or 30 a day, just whipping these things off as rapidly uh, as he could. But the second time I came across him, was in the spring of 1987 when we did a show called Interiors. And when I, I designed this idea of having a Bermuda cottage uh, built at the uh, City Hall site of where the uh, National Gallery is now, then it was just a barn. So we built this little Bermuda cottage and to have views and to give some perspective, I asked Alfred if he would do uh, large murals. I really regret that they got lost somewhere 
Um, so we, as you walk through the cottage, you'd look out a cottage window and you'd see an abstracted Bermuda birdsey uh, as part of the landscape. It was really, it was a, it was a ter tremendous uh, impact. Sadly, uh, we were told that the government uh, of the day wanted to save the cottage and all the, uh, the parts that went with it. They, uh, they duly took it out of the, uh, the gallery and uh, forever it just uh, disappeared and uh, has probably been rotted in the annals of, of, of time, uh, which, is, which is too bad. Then when we next, uh, when we did a, a, a telethon for uh, repatriation of uh, three works in uh, 1995, again, we called on Alfred Birdsey to be part of that uh, process, drawing in artists um, to participate in the repatriation uh, of our Bermuda. And again, Birdsey came to the fore. Uh, we in interviewed him outside, did, went to his studio. I, I believe, by the way, uh, Risa, we still have that clip somewhere. We should find that, given the current uh, uh, projects that we're now doing. We should make oh, a yeah. still uh, of that somewhere. We've got to find that, come to think of it. Definitely. That's, 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 that's a really cool thing to do. Those are the kind of things I've been unearthing. Um, it's a tape. Uh, it's it's a it's not a, a even a disc. It's an old tape, but I think I hope hopefully it's still um, readable. I'm not I'm not quite sure. Um, but as Tom now, said, that was that, that, was, that right he, was that right before he passed away? It was away? right before he passed away. It was in 1996. He passed 19. away in 96. Mm. And it was at Christmas time, and he was baking bread and. As Tom will recall, one of, my, one of our fondest memories is walking into his house and he was covered in flour and he just had the most infectious smile and personality and he was so opened and um, we were so lucky that we were able to capture him on film at the time. And he, he would just talk about anything. I mean, he was just a, a really, really charming, charming gentleman. Yeah, I mean, he, he was curious about uh, things in life right up to the very end. He wasn't just a painter. He was a thinker, a philosopher, a writer, a bread maker. Uh, you know, he did absolutely. And, and it, I guess above all, he was a, 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 an ambassador, somebody with the human capacity just to be able to absorb so much and tell people um, of his uh, findings about things that he was so willing to share them. And he was a lovely guy. Right. Um, and so I don't know how many uh, works uh, we have uh, in, in our have uh, collection of them, but I do, would like to say that when he started out, his works were much more studied and they had a tendency to be, the medium was oil on board. Then there was a, a, a slow shift into um, uh, watercolors. And he, again, the, the early watercolors were somewhat more studied. And then there was this rapid uh, pace that he picked up uh, along the way, he did some printmaking. Um, I'm not quite sure whether they were potato cut printmaking, uh, whether they were wood blocks, I, I, they were or linoleum. I, I they have they, no they idea. They were lithographs. What's that? They were lithographs, because I remember a story that he told me about going up to New York and very carefully picking up a lithograph stone to bring back to Bermuda, because not there weren't very many people doing lithographs. And I think it's interesting, because as I said, his two mentors were Donald Kirkpatrick, who's well known for his etchings and printmaking, and Joe Jones, who sadly we have no Joe, Joe, Joe Jones work in our collection. But if you look at the, um, the style of Joe Jones, which is, um, especially toward the end, it was sort of a delic delicately colored line drawing. He did a lot of printmaking as well. So in the beginning, I think Birdsey was influenced by Donald Kirkpatrick, and that's where he got his chops. That's where he learned about painting, you know, forms and, you know, a little more formal. And then he sort of drifted into this um, more abstract style, which was uh, Joe Jones influenced um, line drawing on colors. And th that's what he's famous for. But as Tom said, we have we have 54 of his works in our collection. And as Risa and Tom know, just yesterday we had a we had an inquiry from from New Hampshire about somebody who has an Alfred Birdsey they wanted to see if we were interested. What's in. what's unusual about it, Risa, is that it's a portrait. Most yeah. of his work, if not all of it, is yeah. virtually landscape with with figures that are incidental. This is a, a portrait of some sort, and I'm I'm most curious to know the, uh, the, the background of that, mm -hmm. because according to the author who brought this to our attention, the, the, the daughter of the owners, um, it was done in the 90s. So um, as he died in uh, 96, we, we've only got five years to deal with. 
Uh, and so I have a feeling that it would be the very, very early 90s. Um, um, but I just am curious about its style. And more than anything else, I'm also color, uh, uh, drawn by its, uh, its coloration. It's, most of Birdsey's uh, colors are blues and pinks and yellows. This is ochres and siennas it's, uh, it's, uh, and black. It's, uh, it's unusual for Birdsey to go to that palette. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I read somewhere that um, he was very influenced, I don't know at what stage, but very influenced with an oriental style of painting, um, and that, that influenced his watercolors, um, which I think, you know, for some people you could see when you look at, look at his paintings. Um, but the other question I have, his daughter, I believe, still has the studio in Bermuda, and people can visit, is that correct? Do I don't know? know if you can visit it now. I talked to her the other day because I had some questions for her. I, I think that studio is now closed. She was she kept it open for a while, but I, I do believe that that's well, well, now. She, she, she said she was hoping to be able to reopen it again, again sometime soon. She was you know she was going through the paperwork. So you know I don't I'm, I'm you know post COVID we'll we'll see what happened. But she has a she has a treasure trove. She's been um, sort of doing her own catalog raisonne of, of Bersi's work and. Although we have 24, she has hundreds, so. Um, She'll never get a catalog resume done. That is absolutely. I, I'm in a catalog resume in quotes, not I, a. That's yeah. impossible. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she's living a pipe dream if she thinks that that's. Oh, no, she do. never said that. She's cataloging his work. Right, right, well. And, um, and trying to figure out where, you know, and, and you know, sort of locating pieces around the island, et cetera, so. Um, well, she's, she, that's, but the point is, that because of his sort of international appeal, uh, you're going to find birdsies in Australia, England, Canada, the United States, Botswana, you know, who knows? I mean, they're all over the place. So, uh, I mean, that's why I said, I mean, he, he really did advertise uh, uh, the island in, in many ways. Uh, people would come back uh, for a second and a third souvenir. It was just part of the, uh, the process. And I think that one of the things that has changed in our tourism, obviously, is that we don't really go on scooters and, and hunt around Bermuda the way we uh, used to. Um, the roads are too crazy uh, and it just doesn't lend itself to that kind of a, a traveler uh, anymore. Uh, if anything, you know, we, they're organized by taxis um, and or twizzies um, in, in, you know, in a, in a different uh, frame of mind. And with uh, COVID having had its impact, I, I doubt that we will see a return ever to uh, sort of the numbers that would be able to drive a, an open studio, a kind of an affair. Um, you know, I, and, and come to think of it, we need to think about how to take our own museum and do an open studio kind of an affair too, so that uh, there is more, more of a drop-in kind of a flavor to it. And how we achieve that, uh, I, you know, I think that is an arena for us to, uh, to, to work on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more on, more on that to come. <laughs> I, I think I think Risa and Kendra are on that right at the moment with we their are. RSC program. So that's exactly what they're talking about and what they're working on. Um, yeah. But because there's there's no question that Birdsey did play a big role in changing how Bermuda was seen by was seen abroad because that for a lot of people their reference to Bermuda is through Birdsey. So um, he did play a hugely important part in developing tourism and and and, and continuing that feeling of being connected with the island. I mean, how many people have called and said, I have a bird seat. I love coming to Bermuda. And it's just a reminder, uh, you know, it's a wonderful reminder of how much people um, want to keep Bermuda in their hearts through art when they leave and hopefully come back again. Mm -hmm. Now, is there, is there a bird seat in our collection that stands out to you um, as the most iconic um, or the most compelling of his works? Um, or, or do you have a number that, that you really uh, gravitate towards? For me, there's a recent arrival, and it is one of sailboats that has really been brilliantly uh, done because it's abstract on one hand, but quite defined uh, on, on the other. Rather than having this idea of, uh, of things just being almost sort of like a helter-skelter uh, approach to it. This is really, it's a, it's a beautiful work. I'm so thrilled that we were able to find something like that because I would guess that it was done sort of at a middle stage. Maybe, just maybe, uh, it was done in and around the same time that Charles Lloyd Tucker did the Amerigo Vespucci in the 1964 
when the tall ships came to, uh, to Bermuda uh, for the first time? Um, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I do know that uh, that's a work that I really do gravitate toward. Mm -hmm. And Elise, what about you? Well, I kind of divide Birdsey's works up into three, three categories. There are the early works that are very reminiscent, as I said, of Donald Kirkpatrick, which are just lovely. Um, then there are the oil paintings that he did, which are beautifully executed. I mean, there's one of a beach that I've always really loved a lot. And then as Tom said, there's the later work, which are highlighted by some wonderful works like the sailboat pictures. So it's, you know, there, there, there's sort of a, a number of different stages. It's hard because he was so diverse, it's hard to compare one stage to the other because, you know, he kind of moved around. But I do think that coming back to Charles, that there, there, is, a, there is a parallel between Charles Lloyd Tucker's work in the 60s and Birdsey's. And I think if you compare them one on one, you would, um, it'd be an interesting comparison how two, two Bermudians working at the same time had, were, were a lot alike and yet so different. Um, mm -hmm. And it's one, of the, it's one of the interesting things that, ever evolving about you know studying art and studying painting and studying styles and techniques and seeing what influenced them and there's you know there's a lot of social context that that influenced them both as well yeah and um i'm really i'm really keen to dig up this video um interview that you have of, of him right before he passed away so we'll have to yeah. find that and see if we can we, link we, we do because as i recall we filmed him working out on his, uh, in his sort of the back area of his uh, studio. We did a, an, an open interview. So yes, we, we do have to find that uh, uh, and we will, we will. Lisa, we will. Good stuff. Uh, All right. But it was never transferred, it was never transferred to a disc. So I don't know, there's a box, of, I don't know. Hey, but, but wait a second. We're in a museum, dehumidified and all the rest of that sort of stuff, you know? <laughs> All we got to do is find the tape. We've we've done we've done others from tape to disc before. This wouldn't be the first, and it ain't going to be the last. So well, I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet digging down there, but I'll look for it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. keep digging. We'll keep digging. Well, thank yeah. you, Tom. Thank you, Elise. Um, appreciate your insights today. And um, yeah. as Tom said before, there's more to come on this idea around studio tours. So we will keep all of our members abreast of any updates because we have- It's very exciting. Yeah, it's a very exciting yeah. concept.